Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Admiral Markets webinar of 12 of June 2014. Today, Chris Swarzyk is with me, and we will talk about which news to trade and how to trade it. So, first of all, we will explain uh, which are news releases, which could be traded uh, during three sessions. Then, I will explain a few good strategies for all of you who want to trade the news. And, of course, as always, before we begin, a quick uh, disclaimer. Online educational materials are developed by Admiral Markets Estonia for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. To get a corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, please visit www.admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country residence, and contact an appropriate entity. Please disclosure statement stating all the possible risks associated with Forex market. By accepting those risks, you are also proceeding further with us. Admiral Markets UK LTD takes no responsibility for the information accuracy. The analysis represents the personal opinion of the author, me and Chris, and in no way it represents the actual suggestion for the trade. These are not the MUK's opinions. The website in the video is not the .co.uk website, but the globaluse.com website. Forest is risky business, this is personal opinion only, and this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. So we need to know what are fundamental views, key releases, currency focus, news focus, and how to trade it. So let's get, let's cut to the chase and let's get straight forward. Economic data is a very important thing because it tends to be one of the most important catalysts for short-term movements in any market. If you want to trade the news, then you need to watch economic data releases. All economic data releases have predetermined time of their actual release. So, I will talk about my time. It's a GMT plus one or a GMT plus two if you get daylight savings. So, now it's six o'clock. So, basically, at 10 a.m., 10 a.m., usually we have some Euro dollar news. It can be also at 9 a.m. 10.30 is GBP news. 2 p.m. 30 is US dollar news. 3 o'clock after midnight is usually Australian dollar news. 11 o'clock p.m. is New Zealand dollar news. So all news is have the predetermined time of release. All news releases can and usually provide spike momentum which can be traded. So you're not interested in fundamental shifts because those are short-term move movers of the market. They can give us either a retracement or a trade. We will talk about later, we will talk about how to actually enter the trade after the news. But many of those releases are perfect for entering the retracement. So, for example, if we trade cable, GBP, dollar, let's, let's say, we can, if the news is good, GBP dollar will usually go up, but if something happens, and let's say that news is really bad, then we can enter after the retracement, because the main trend is to the upside. So, news releases, usually most of them, 99% of them, have very short momentum very short uh, life. Main movers of the market are predetermined trends and actual sometimes very often NFP numbers or press conferences, G17 meetings and so on. So all those news which you see during the day are shorter movers. They give necessary volatility to the market and we can either trade it or wait for retracement to enter a trade which is usually predetermined. So that is very, we, we, you, we do that very often as I said on GBP dollar. Then we have adaptability depending on the current state of the economy the relative importance of these releases may change. So it's I will tell you which news are most important, 
but as I said, 99% of them are very, very short-term movers. They cannot move the market as it was four or five years ago when, you remember, Euro was falling versus dollar. Usually those units has immediate impact. Then if you are intraday traders, you will trade either a trend or a breakout. So for intraday traders, it doesn't have any significant meaning except giving you the chance to trade. You don't care whether the euro dollar or cable will be uh, is is good uh, whether they are good for their economy or not. You are only interested where they will go in that particular day. So we are not interested what will happen in two three months after now. This is not our business. That's politicians' business. Our business is to provide. Uh, very good opportunities for ourselves during those news releases. Then we have FOMC. Let's say that FOMC may be more important than other news in that particular month. As I said, not all news are, are important. The key to trading news is knowing which releases matter and which don't. Then we have impact. Some news create shorter, but other news create midterm impact on the markets. And we have very important thing, you know which thing is that. It's a volatility because massive amount of traders are entering or exiting based on the news release and these traders want to do so at the, at the price they feel is best. That causes a relatively large move immediately following news release. So volatility is the crucial for news trading. I will show you why. If you watch the volatility webinar, which we had a couple of days ago, volatility is the most important when you want to trade the news. There are dozens of key economic news releases each month. We have interest rate decisions, NFP, FOMC decision, inflation, which is usually marked at CPI or PPI, unemployment, industrial production, business sentiment surveys, it's IFO, business climate, ZU, sentiment, then consumer confidence surveys, trade balance, manufacturing sector surveys, and not very often there are stress tests. Stress tests are n not very, they don't happen often, so you can neglect this, but usually if that happens, or we know that if we read the calendar, and during stress tests we do not trade. Most important news release data for Euro uh, is this. Of course, it's ECB press conference where they decide about minimum bid rate and other other measures which ECB will take for the currency, for Euro. We don't trade after the minimum bid rate and bid ECB press conference. We can trade uh, New Zealand news, I will show you, New Zealand data which uh, happened, let's say, yesterday, but uh, Euro is very, very volatile during news release, especially during ECB press conference, because in, in this particular time, we have a cross-session. We have New York, London, cross-session, and volatility is normal sometimes. Uh, it creates spikes, and I don't recommend to trade ECB press conference, because volatility trading, which I will show you later, I'm not sure it, it, it will give a good, good results if you trade this new re news release. So it tends to be very choppy, unstable, and because of that, we, I don't recommend you to trade it. Germans use sentiment, German flash, flash manufacturing PMI, for me, are good news to trade. Now, this news will probably give you a new trend for London or London New York cross session, or they will give you a good retracement if that doesn't happen. 
So if the trend of euro dollar is good, is long, sorry, and we have good number for this release, that will spike the price, but after some time, usually before New York, it will give you retracement to go long. So most of the time, you can be sure that this news, if, it, if numbers is good, will give you a good long trade after the retracement. Or if the number gets bad, is bad, and the uh, trend is long on euro dollar, that will give you a nice retracement to the downside to subsequently enter at least a long scalp or swing scalp trade. We talked about how you can turn a scalp into swing scalp and swing scalp into intraday position. So it doesn't matter if you open a scalp or a scalp swing, you can always turn it into intraday position. That is what I do usually if I scalp by using trading stops. I explained already. I, I explained it already. So Germans U and PMI manufacturing will usually give you a nice retracement to go after the number has been published. If the trend is short and you get long number, that will provide a necessary retracement to enter the short afterwards. If the news is actually aligned with the trend, then you need to wait for a retracement later. And those numbers are not very tradable in the terms of volatility candles. I will show you later which actual numbers you can actually trade by being a reactive or pro-reactive trader. But these numbers are not to be traded by volatility candles, only as retracements. Germans use sentiment, if, if I don't know if uh, any of you knows what use uh, sentiment is, it basically is a level of a diffusion index which is based on uh, survey German institutional investors and analysts. Usually it will, uh, it is a leading indicator of economic health because uh, in investors and analysts are informed by virtue of their job and changes in their sentiment. So changing the investor sentiment can be a signal of future economic activity. PMI is level of a diffusion index which is based on surveyed purchasing managers in the manufacturing industry. Because business react quickly to market conditions and uh, it gives us the most current relevant, relevant insight into the company's view of the economy. Then we have dollar news. Actually, all of the dollar news are not traded by volatility candles except for NFP, NFP, and all other news will give you a very short time spike or retracement. So FOMC is very important. I never trade during FOMC. ISM, advanced unemployment claims, they all can give you a retracement. Then we have non-farm employment change, unemployment rate. It can be traded. Chris will explain how you can trade NFP. All these news are connected. So non-farm employment, unemployment rate are connected. Preliminary consumer sentiment, core CPR, core retail sales, retail sales, trade balance, Philly Fed are tradable as retracements, not as volatility candles. Philly Fed manufacturing, of course, same. FOMC meeting minutes, I don't trade it, I don't recommend you to trade it. Same as for minimum bid rate ECB press conference, we don't trade this. ADP was tradable once uh, back in time, but today, again, it's not tradable and I don't trade it even with volatility candles. So, actually NFP is the most tradable if you want to trade the news of all those news releases. Now, we have currency focus and news focus. In the first place, we have dollar, British pound and euro. First group can be traded in London, New York session. Okay, so US dollar, British pound and euro can be traded in US dollar session. CAD is traded during US session. London, New York cross session. You can trade Canadian dollar. And a third group can be traded during Australian Asia session. Australian dollar, Japanese yen, New Zealand dollar and Swiss franc. Swiss franc so-so. I don't trade it so often. More of that I trade with Australian, 
Japanese yen, New Zealand. You remember the trade for yesterday. I gave you Euro New Zealand setup, and that setup was hit two or one hour after my analysis. POC was hit subsequently, driven by good New Zealand news. It was good for 300 pips. So I got a couple of messages from traders that they have got 40, 20, 25 pips. So excellent. If you got any of that, good, because that's what our job is also to help you to gain some pips. So that is also you can apply that. I will show you later to the chart. I exclude, as I say, Swissy because pegging is on, uh, on the Swissy currency. It's fixed exchange rate. It's fixed versus euro. So uh, euro Swissy, they're pegged. Swissy is especially pegged to euro, so I don't trade it. Swiss yen is different thing, cat Swiss is different thing, but Euro Swiss, no. Not each news can be traded. So, as I explained in the previous post, I will use examples of tradable news and how it can be traded. I will always give the advantage to Euro, Dollar and GBP because, only because, I live in, Euro, in Europe and uh, my primary session is London and London, New York. If I would live in, in uh, I don't know, Osaka in Japan or uh, Melbourne in Australia, I would probably give the advantage to Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and Japanese yen. So, it's the same because you can trade, I will show you New Zealand, Japanese yen, Australian dollar crosses at the same, the same way. Japanese yen can be traded. I said sometimes, because for London traders, it's too late to be awake to trade. For me personally, you know, if I get into a trade before 1 or 2 o'clock, it's okay. But after 2 o'clock, usually if I get into a trade, I cannot manage it. And I need to put stop loss and some trailing stop or something. And to be honest, I don't like to trade Asia. Above mentioned news will have some impact on price action after it has been released, but not all are tradable. That is the thing with Asia session. Sometimes, as yesterday, Asia session can be great. But very often it's, it's rangy, and if I would trade Asia session, I would need to be awake. So that is the only reason. I need to sleep. Distinguish tradable and high impact news you want to focus on the specific news. So not as you see, all of those news are high impact news. They have read. This is Forex Factory calendar. Admiral Marcus calendar has uh, quotation marks. So basically, you need to distinguish tradable and high impact news. I already told you which news are, which news are Tradable, but all of them are red, and that means those are high impact news. GBP dollar. You can see all the news associated with cable. Pound is the most suitable for news trading, and if I trade it, I trade GBP if I trade the news. All of those news is except for average earnings index, but it came same time, it comes same time as all others, are tradable. Especially claim and count change, MPC asset purchase, and official bank rates. Those are very tradable. Also, services manufacturing CPI is tradable. It gives a spike usually in single direction in contrary to euro dollar. So euro dollar will have some whipsaws after the news, and pound most of the time Pound has a straight rise or a straight drop. There is volatility kick, and you can exploit those volatility kicks to your advantage. It's much better to trade than other pairs, and I don't trade cable yen as it dif the ATR differs and it's more unstable than GBP dollar. I'm talking particularly about news trading, not about general trading. I trade GBP yen. But when news hits, it, I prefer GBP dollar to GBPN. We want to see either a red or a green number at Forex Factory calendar. Okay? 
we want to see either a red or a green number at Forex Factory calendar. A green number means that news is good and we can expect a surge in long direction. These numbers are bad and red numbers generally mean that the pair should go down. So you can wait for either retracement and sell it or if you want to sell it, I will show you two ways how you can trade it. Always do demo news trading prior to live. It differs a lot from classic trading as we trade spikes. So this is completely different thing to classic trading. There are two entries, proactive and reactive. Reactive setups enter five minutes after the first candle close in the news release direction. So if the news is green, green numbers, we go long. If it's red, we go short. But we, there are specific rules. Proactive enters immediately after the news at the break of prior candle. So proactive entry is entering immediately after the news at the break of prior candle and reactive entry is five minutes after the first candle close. GBP is traded on five minute charts. So prior to news open, news open your M5 chart. Okay? So be, basically this is when news kick in. Wait for the first five minute candle after the news to close. So this is the first this is the first candle to close after the news. So this is one way. I will show you also how you can trade volatility candles. This is standard breakout setup. So wait for first five minute candle after the news to close. So this is news candle and this is five minute candle after the news. It's called setup candle. If the news came out good for GBP, we want to trade the first breakout of that setup candle. So that the this is the entry. We go with trigger happy entry because we are entering the spike. So enter at the break of five minute range. Okay? Five minute range you can enter at the break of the five minute range. Okay, good numbers and you go in the trend direction because you want to go long. If this candle after the news, five I mean after the setup candle spiked short below this candle, this setup won't be valid. So if the good if uh, we see good numbers, we want to trade long. We have a setup candle, after the setup candle has been broken, we go long with trigger happy trade. Okay, you can see also in this example, this is news, this is setup candle. After the setup candle, you can see it has been broken because all these are green numbers and after those green numbers, you can go long. Of course, placing the stops below. This is five minute chart, okay? Oh, I have skipped some of that. So this is a setup candle and you go long because numbers are good. Then next step is proactive setup. If you want to be proactive, then you wait immediately after news release and go for the breakout. So this is news release, bang, it went to the downside but you see good numbers and immediately after the news you go for the breakout. I don't recommend that. My favorite is volatility trade and this reactive trade. I usually if I trade GBP from time to time I will trade it this way. Okay? As I told you with set up candle. Now other pairs you can trade it by volatility candles. You can also trade another breakout. Sometimes you can trade also yen pairs, but this is my preferred method if I use volatility trading setups. Volatility trading is a completely different thing because volatility trading is something which uses 
volatility candles. So use volatility trading as it was presented in the previous webinar. Okay? As it was presented in the previous webinar. Open 15 minute chart, wait for volatility candle, drop a Fibonacci retracement in news direction, and 50, 61.8, and 78.6 Fib retracements are entries. Okay? Those are entries. This is the example of New Zealand dollar. You can trade if you want official cash rate. All of these things, you can trade Australian dollar, 3 a.m., and you can trade Japanese yen this way because volatility is good in Asia session for New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, and yen. You can see that this candle is, this is Euro New, uh, New Zealand. I need to tell you, this is New, Euro New Zealand. And you can see that, of course, because New Zealand news is good, Euro New Zealand will go down. Because New Zealand will go up, pulling Euro down. So this pair will go down. On New Zealand news, good news, good release data, Euro New Zealand goes down. Then we want to go down, but we want to see retracement. This is volatility candle. You do that on 15-minute chart. So put you know how to draw Fibonacci from left to right. This candle only. This is volatility candle. Look how the candle is big. And your entries can be 50, 61.8, 78.6. How you do it? If your risk, total risk is 0 0.3, then you can open a trade 0 0.1 here, 0 0.1 there, and 0 0.1 there. So always try to go from 50 to 68, 61.8 to 78.6, opening 0 0.A subsequently. Your stop should be uh, just above 88.6 or 100. If you see that price is reaching very close to 88.6, as this example, the safest way is to put it just above this candle, above 100 or above the candle's high. And you can see what happened after the news. So this is actual New Euro New Zealand trade. Even though we had setups great from uh, 50, because it gave us 300 pips, actual news release could be traded. So volatility candle, then retracement to 56.78.6. You enter subsequently. You divide your risk. If your risk is 0 0.5, you divide it 1.2, 1.2, or 1. Sorry, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Or you can divide it by 0 0.25. Okay, it's up to you, but don't go above your risk. So if this is stop loss, if your trade allows you to use 0 0.3, use it. If it says you can, if you if you risk, let's say 0 0.6, and your money management tells you tells you that you will be risking more than 3% with 0 0.6, then don't trade it. Trade 0 0.3. New Zealand dollar of course, of course went up. You can see actual news release. Left to right, wait for retracement. The retracement came in 56.1 point, again 78.6. Look how Fibonacci numbers are respected to the pip. And after the news, look what happened. So basically, this is how I advise you to trade actual news release. And now you know which news you can trade and which news you should avoid. So this is volatility scalp. Advantages. Very volatile, exploding fake outs can be very profitable. It may give us a prevailing trend for next couple of weeks. Yes, New Zealand, I will look to buy into dips, guys, every single day. Maybe in next month or in next two weeks, I will analyze it. But this is great news for New Zealand. It actually, the uh, official cash rate was. Uh, uh, to, uh, it went to expectations, but it's good. It's for good for New Zealand dollar, and it gives us good chances to go into retracements to buy it. Disadvantages: volatility for some traders are not good. There are initial whipsaws. Risk can be very high if you don't know how to trade it. Some irrational movements can be exploited, but as you see, neither there was no irrational movements because we went into trend direction. 
with these two trades, and it may give us a prevailing. Tra uh, sorry, and it's a slippage. Sometimes, if you trade uh, market orders, it can give you slippage, but only if volatility is too high and the pairs are moving really, really, really fast. So that is when slippage may come in play. So this is all what I had in mind. Now I will hand over presentation to Chris. He will show you also how to trade NFP. He will give you advices uh, how to trade it. And if you have any questions, you can ask us later. So Chris, you can continue. Yeah, definitely, T. T. Let me uh, grab the control here. Alrighty, so you should be able to see it. Thank you, Nenis, for a lovely PowerPoint. We're going to continue now, indeed, with uh, the NFP3 specifics, so we can skip all these intro slides and head over to this part that uh, basically summarizes what you already know, that these are tradable news events. Uh, roughly speaking, this is what you want to take a look at. It's, of course, easier always to, to take a look at a news event that has expectancies and release figures than I would say a let's say a press conference because then the words are being interpreted and that's always a tad more difficult for the average retail trader. This makes it a bit more uh, doable in the sense that we have clear numbers. Of course, these do have that and uh, these are then tradable. So let's talk about the interest rate and the NFP. Obviously, when we have better economic data, we got the potential for inflation. Uh, this, in turn, uh, increases the expectations of interest rate, and that's what it's all about, because the interest rate differential there uh, is what, of course, uh, let's say the demand increases or decreases. If we have lower interest rates, uh, the demand for that currency is going to decrease in general, unless the other currency that it's paired against would do the same, then we have, of course, relative you know, decrease at the same point. And New Zealand is a great example of what happened uh, recently with rate hikes. It had yesterday another quarter increase. That's the third one in a row since the beginning of this year, January, March, or April, and then now uh, we've seen quarter of increases. Basically, the Kiwi in New Zealand uh, had 2.5 interest rate at the beginning of this year. Now, with three rate increases in a row, way up to 3.25, and you can see what kind of effect that had on the Kiwi dollar and other New Zealand pairs. We had, of course, huge bullishness on the New Zealand after that increase. Now, the reason is it has to do with this interest rate increase. That that's why we saw such a reaction and such a big um, spike, such a big, you know, such a big price movement. So. Not only the interest rate itself rising, but even the expectation of a potential rise already causes tra traders and investors to be uh, in caution and aware of that. That is why they're looking, news traders are looking at these events to measure that expectation, right? If you get good employment, well, then the economic, economic data is improving, and you could expect eventually maybe uh, interest rates to rise to combat inflation. Right? That's the basic thing behind it. Central banks make those decisions and when interest rates get too high you lose the business cycle changes and you see uh, a decrease of um, consumer demand and business sentiment and eventually you, you, you know, the interest rate will have to decrease to boost demand again within the economy. So this up and down is something that is, is almost always present looking at a longer time frame at least. So that's the central banks are making those decisions. They manage <clears throat> sorry, the currency, the money supply, the interest rates, uh, the bank reserves, print money. So basically that is the monetary policy and then the governments uh, make the fiscal policy or the decision makers uh, depending on the country. So that is you know the, the basically the policy of fiscal, right? That's different. That's about budget and stuff like that. Monetary policy is with the central bank. So that is the interesting part here that the Fed has targeting inflation percentage and unemployment targets, the ECB only inflation. So there's a dual mandate for the Fed and that's sometimes a bit difficult, but uh, they want to uh, focus on both. So one more thing I wanted to say is that basically what happens 
uh, with the economies is that you you have an X amount of money circulating in a country or actually in the world, right? Uh, and the economy has a certain size, which is GDP, gross domestic product. So a country has you know an X amount of GDP. It has X amount of currency. If that currency, if you print more money, which you see nowadays a lot, if you have more quantitative easing, then there's more money for the same GDP. That basically makes that particular particular currency less interesting for foreign investors or demand. Right? If GDP grows more than the currency uh, increases in size, then there's actually less money for this, for more GDP, and that actually increases the demand for the currency. So that's the uh, mechanism that you want to keep in mind. All these decisions that you see here are just kind of like a measurement for what's going on with the economy. A very difficult measurement because you got revisions. You got actually down the road six months from now. You got things changing that happened, uh, news and events that happened three months ago. That's all because there's a lag in data. There's a lag in economic data. Not everything is basically right here, right now, no. Right? Although, of course, we, we can make the best decisions as we can. If you're in the board of the central bank, you try to make the best decisions, but sometimes you also are dependent on lagging information. There's nothing you can do about it. That's just because it takes time to collect this data. And that's why this data is important. Uh, all this data is important. The, the, the current ones, the revised ones, as a measurement of you know to keep the finger on the pulse of what where the economy is going to. And that's why at each time we get a difference between the expected and the reality. You kind of get like a mini shock. It's like a mini earthquake because you get a reaction to that news. And some traders trade that reaction and try to capitalize on that. I myself am not one of those. I'll be honest with you, I don't do that. So uh, you know, I'm maybe not the, the, the best I, person to, 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 to explain it. I do know uh, people that, uh, that are into that, so it is possible. Uh, you have certain disadvantages uh, that I prefer to use technical analysis personally. Here you see the euro interest rate decision um, where you can see the decrease of the rate going down ever since end of 2012. So interest rates have major impact. We know that press conference too, it's always a bit difficult to judge what kind of impact that had or has. The this is a chart that was made, a screenshot that was made two days ago because the year dollar is way lower now, well not way but a bit lower. It's hanging right at the low of this engulfing twin. That was a looked like a bullish uh, engulfing twin, but Maybe we had a harami after that, so we did see some downside pressure. Now we're close to the bottom of this uh, daily wick, so it could be a bouncing spot. Again, I would say so near support, but let's see. In any case, uh, there are a couple of ways to, to, to potentially trade it. It's trading the immediate news release, which sometimes has difficulties because, um, well, if you wait for the reaction, you can trade it, right? Trading the reaction is very difficult. Positioning yourself before the reaction is possible, but it's more difficult. Uh, you could you try it, but the you know the reaction could be very volatile. If you trade your reaction, you might not get the trade. If you wait for the reaction, that's what most do. Then trade accordingly. That's possible uh, and more doable. Uh, or you can even approach it from a very long-term perspective and say, okay, I am looking at the result of the daily candle. Today is an interest day, today is an NFP day. What does the daily candle show me? What information can I read from that? Um, is there any particular turnaround or reversal during that day that happened that be, could, could be a key factor in a reversal, for instance? Those days, those daily candles during those news events have significant impact. Interest rate day on Thursday was engulfing twin. I think that's a strong signal, but the market hasn't showed any confirmation that it is going to bounce to the upside again. We have still a lot of bearish pressure despite that weekly pin bar in daily engulfing twin. Maybe because Friday was actually a bearish day and it was an NFP day. So I already talked about this. We can trade uh, the, the daily candle or the short-term reaction. Um, so you know that depends. Obviously, 
the daily candle is, is easier, it's, less, it's more relaxed to look at it, but it will take more time to capitalize on a new opportunity like that because it's going to just take longer for trade to develop, obviously. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Unless uh, you use the signal and then dive into lower time frames <clears throat> to catch a lower time frame trade, right? The longer the daily candle could be like a trigger, but it doesn't mean that you would have to uh, trade that particular signal right there. <clears throat> you can shop around and look for better entries. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> Losing my voice. This is the short term reaction. This is the euro dollar um, downside of NFP, it should be. This is basically the, you see, sometimes, you know, you want, that's why looking at a one minute chart like this is good because you got that usually. When you have news events like that, you often have a false move up, and sometimes even two. What you can see is a spike down, spike up. You know, easily a spike up, spike down, and then a continuation up. Or in this case, a spike up and then a continuation down. These things do happen. That's why what I like to look at is either one minute fractals, makes sense, or even one minute candle highs and lows. You know, if you have a reaction candle like that, wait for that reaction candle to be broken, right? It's, it's before assuming anything. It does look bullish. But it's just a reaction, um, and you can see that waiting for the close for the break of the low here uh, would do good. Now, I'm not saying that this is representative, so by all means, please test it um, yourself and then take a look. But I do think that you had a lot of spikes up and down. Looking therefore for confirmation, that's my point, is a good thing. How you organize that confirmation is something that I would suggest that you, if you like news trading, is something that better to uh, to do yourself and test yourself because it will give you more confidence anyhow. Uh, potential. Uh, but you can see some kind of bear flag here, and when we break the bear flag, we get one more drop. Uh, it looks like uh, some 80 pips, in fact, it's not that small of an amount, um, for a one minute chart at least. So you can see these news events have hefty reactions. If you wait for a break of that low and the trend line here is classical chart pattern trading, in fact, uh, you get that, uh, that trade. If you chill stop to one minute fractals, you can exit right there. Just a, an example, but this is things you can think of. When trading, when organizing a plan for trading the news, the non-farm payroll or NFP for short, um, we've discussed that in the past. But just quickly again, it's for those that maybe were not here last time, is that it's a statistic research recorded and reported by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's a number that shows how many people are in the U.S. are working of any business, but excluding government employees, private household employees, employees of nonprofit organizations for individuals, and farm employees. So agriculture is not uh, basically included here. So we're looking at services, I mean, we're looking at basically uh, private business, uh, looking at service and industry and how many employees are working there. And it's a very, very, very important number. It's actually the most important figure for uh, regarding the fundamentals that you could expect. And it's always highly watched, highly viewed, and Nothing? Okay, I'm trying to... Uh... Yeah, okay. <laughs> I uh, get your point, Eve. Um, i trying to reach Nana, see if he can pass back that presenter. I don't know what happened. Got kicked out somehow. 
Hey, Sylvia, sorry. Seems we have some internet problems. Ah, uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, do you have a presenter? Uh, and it is back, right? Yeah, I don't know if yeah. you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you now. Great. Uh, I think I have prompted you to a presenter, right? But I cannot see your screen, unfortunately. No? I will ask them. In the meantime, Carl has a question. Please recommend good books on Forex to explain trends for or entry and exits. book could be based on technicalized or money management. There's so many good books. Um, let me think which one could be maybe a good starter. Trends or entry and exit. Well, I'm, I was recently reading, um, let me grab the title exactly. I just finished that book two days ago. I found that interesting for uh, entries and exits. Let me tell you what the name is. It is John L. Person. I'll write it down for you. Ah, I'm presenter again. Good. There we got it. The screen is is up. So, but in the meantime, let me just finish that. Uh, the name and the book title. It does discuss the uh, trends and entry and exits, and I thought it was interesting. So I would suggest why not that one actually. Um, let me just grab the title. Hang on, folks. It's called Candlestick and Pivot Point Trading Triggers. It's from John L. Person. So anyone who wants to take a look, it's in the chat right there. All right. So, yeah, that, that basically the NFP accounts for 80% of the workers who produce the entire GDP. So it's, it's interesting for government policymakers and economists to have an idea about the current state of the economy and um, predict future levels as well. Uh, the NFP is expanding or decreasing, whether, our, whether we have economic growth in the U.S. or weakness. And um, the increase of NFP is good. Or, yeah, it depends. I mean, if you, have, if you have more jobs, of course, that's good, and it could lead to an increase uh, of inflation. This is the effect of or impact of quantitative easing um, back when we had quantitative easing one and two, before we had this third program. And you can see the statement here, right at that red line. The first red line on the very left, we uh, put a blue circle around it. That's when the statement was made to buy up to uh, the securities. And you can see how the euro dollar flies up from its low of 125 all the way up to 150. That was in uh, 2009. Then we got a huge crash. About March 2010, halfway, uh, the purchases were completed, and you see the fall down to 120. Then Fed Chairman hinted quantitative QE2 right here at this dip, boom, upside. And then right at this dip, they were started to announce the quantitative easing too, boom, upside. Um, quantitative easing two completed, boom, downside. So it's interesting to see and compare the moments where the decisions were made, the moments where the programs were introduced compared to price and uh, the moment of this weekly chart. And yeah, it's just an interesting way to, to see. Actually, we had some downside here first, but then upside, so it's not exact. But in many cases, it's interesting that it, it, you know, the price does uh, follow that sentiment. So it's good to keep an eye on that. Uh, this is a perfect example where we introduced QE2, and we have bearish, bearish um, Rami and boom downside for, for a long while all the way from 150 to 118. It was a bit of a struggle here in summer 2011. I remember that very clearly. It was uh, so choppiness uh, to trade, but uh, eventually we got some good trends to the downside. Um, different approaches possible. NFP, good for scalping, um, important for position and swing traders, but 
difficult for intraday traders and scalpers because of the huge volatilities. Uh, I mean, depending on how you look at it, if you're scalping the news, let me say this way, if you're waiting for the news event, then obviously that's the thing you want to look for. If you're trading, if you're scalping without being even aware of the news event, that's not good, right? Because you can get into trouble. Um, that's what I mean. Uh, intraday traders is also difficult because the movement of the market can be very, very slow, very, very choppy. And if you're positioning yourself for some nice smaller swing on the day, uh, yeah, that might not happen uh, until the news event. So that, you know, I have a lot of quietness regarding that uh, particular uh, pair and part of the day. NFP is often important and is, is a game changer. It has an impact. You know, not all NFPs will have major impacts and major uh, continuations or reversals, but if you look at the NFP days, take a uh, calendar, look at which days are NFP, and look at the daily candles. Usually they're a pretty clear signal. They usually give information that is valuable. If any particular daily candle would have a lot of meaning, it usually is an NFP day. Uh, actually, last Friday was quite small on FP day. That's because the figures came in flat as expected. No difference, no uh, leverage there. I mean, we, we had hardly any um, divergence there, so there was nothing really except the smallest ups and downs. Typically, the day shows more of a trend continuation or reversal. It's a noteworthy day and something that is worth looking at, even if you're not a position trader. It has a future value because it's just such an important day that that daily candle kind of even, I mean all daily candles have a value, but that particular daily candle has an extra value. Go ahead and test it and you'll see. Um, oh, actually I have an example here, even better. Uh, the pink ones are NFP days. So if you start on the left, the very left, you see Eric and Golden Twins you get uh, basically two, three days downside. That's not all too much, but at least you get some downside. Um, then you have an NFP. The second one is a bullish day. That leads up to actually uh, a bit of a run up at bullish day NFP. The third one is a bearish day. That's actually kind of like positioning or accelerating the downwards with momentum, right? What about this day? The fourth one is a pin bar. What does it do? It causes the retracement. The fifth one is a bearish candle and is actually halfway to downside. So that didn't really have any particular meaning, just a continuation. The NFP, the sixth one, bullish and golfing twin. What did it do? Upside. Uh, Marabuzo candle, after already upside and after an uptrend, continuation. Uh, this candle, wick, correction. Maribuzo, downside. Wick, upside. Bullish, upside. Wick, downside. Um, this one is actually one of the few that's a mix. It's actually a bearish candle, but it takes long before you get the downside. Um, and here, clearly, bullish days, bullish continuation. So this is looking at about one and a half years, almost, and you can see the impact of those dates and the importance of those dates. Here we have an example more zoomed in. Big wick, reversal. Here we have close and reverse, bullish day and upside continuation. So this is just the, the you know in the, the, the zoomed in version of what we saw uh, before that. Here we have bearish day, big wick, reversal. So that's what I wanted to share actually. Uh, a little bit faster, but uh, so we have still a few minutes. Maybe some questions that you would like to ask, that would be good to do now. Um, in the meantime, don't forget, next week we have more webinars. We have Learning Lab with Nenet, F Forex, FX Expert Advice, uh, no, FX Recap on Monday and Expert Advice on Wednesday. And we have our own session again next week, same time, same place. And we have our live trading lab webinars on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Take a look at Wednesday. It's a, it's a new, relatively new webinar theme. It's for strategy, so we're looking specifically at strategies. 
Uh, we're looking at one fixed strategy, but we're also, if we have time, like we did this week, we were looking at new strategies, how you can work on new strategies and you know, how they can look like. And this week we gave an example of, uh, it was the, um, uh, let's see, yeah, it was an example of Tenken, Chimuku. Besides our usual the average well, uh, strategy, we actually, in today's live trading lab, we were looking at a euro cap breakout. This trade that I took live in the trading room, and I promised that we will take a look at it after we, you know, in this room uh, right here to take a look at how it worked out. And we took it, or I took it, I'm say this way, right now. This candle right here, we shorted it there, and uh, it actually, um, I was lucky that I didn't close it out right at this because this was a bullish candle after the wick. Would have been a normal place that I would have closed it out. I was just distracted by a bit of, uh, of a, my attention was a bit distracted and when I looked, actually price was already moving down. So I was a bit unlucky to, to survive this pullback. Uh, however, if you did close it out there, then it was still, um, it was still about five pips win. Not a lot, but anyhow, still a win. Uh, otherwise, the exit would have been here where we have the uh, bullish crossover of the short to moving average we discussed in that room. So it was a small win, nothing spectacular, but better than um, the other way around. So that was the EuroCAD this morning. Take a look at the spreads for more information on our markets and the social media as well. So I recommended the book there. It's um, I think worth the the trouble if you if you like pivot points. This actually that book is if you like the strategy we're discussing on Wednesdays, the regular strategy, it would be a good book to read actually. I think that would uh, give uh, a good idea. Actually one of the exit techniques that um, that is mentioned there is something that I'm using, so take a look. Um, but it's an interesting combination of pivot points and candlesticks and a bit of moving averages. So it's yeah, it's okay, Eve. By all means, please uh, go ahead and let us know. Yeah, all questions are welcome. We have some time left, so. I'm not sure which version I have. Um, I think it's version 8. It says I'm DT8. Sure, actually. Huh. It, it says Camarilla DT8. Oh, I yeah, think it's, it's 8. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, there's a useful link, by the way, from uh, Carl, um, which has the PDF there for free. That's cool. So that makes it even easier and quicker there. The forest ball. <laughs> uh, I think it would be fun. I think it would be, uh, be a lot of fun. Indeed, World Cup is always always a, a great event, and I'm sure it's going to be this one uh, as well. It's um, especially at the beginning. I'm always very excited. I love World Cups. I have intensively uh, looked at uh, many of them in the meantime. Unfortunately, <laughs> not, not unfortunately, but it's always a good sign of this one. Um, not, I'm not as, uh, that as fanatic as maybe when I was a bit younger, but still, I will watch many. So the Forest Ball nicely ties into that World Cup. Nana, are you going to watch too, or you're skipping it? Uh, sure, I will gonna watch, I gonna watch it for sure. So I will see, maybe I will, uh, I, I would like Brazil to win or Germany, so 
Surely I will watch it. There's no doubt. <laughs> I'm a fan I, I of Brazil, yeah. 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 And uh, Germany, yeah, I like Germany. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, will, I will support the Dutch because I'm Dutch, so that, that's a simple, <laughs> simple equation, of course. <laughs> we will see, yeah, I don't know, maybe with my friends, we will watch it probably outside. So, just, I, I can wait, I really can't wait for that to, to happen, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Holland is uh, playing a tough one. It's actually the World last Cups um, in 2010. The final was Holland Spain. It's actually the first match for uh, for for Holland and Spain. Holland is great, in. actually. It's a great team, really, and you have the best player in the world. So, <laughs> uh, I'm curious. We, you shouldn't be complaining. <laughs> yeah, we had a, we didn't have a good 2012. It was a horrible one. It was one of the worst ones. But we had a great 2010. So. Yeah, 2010. I think great. Yeah. Brazil, of course. Yeah, I mean, home playing at home is it's going to be tough to beat them. But let's see, could be a lot of pressure too. So. Yeah, but they live for football. You know, they're they, yeah. that is their life, and they're really dedicated. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would have nothing against. I mean, the only thing I would I like would like to see is a country that actually hasn't won it. I always like to to root for those teams because. Um, some teams have just won it a, a lot. <laughs> I'd like to see a team that has the one and win. Uh, you know, Brazil has won it a lot, so in that regard, I would like to see another team win it. But you know, if they win, they win. Most importantly is that I hope that the winner gets it uh, relatively fair and that there's not, you know, some kind of um, strange penalty decision or something like that or offside. That would be a bit annoying. But let's hope for that. That um, that would be good. But I guess, uh, yeah, we'll see. It starts tonight, right? So Yeah, we will see. We'll watch it. Yep. <laughs> well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks so much for joining, and uh, see you all soon. Yeah, see you soon. See you all you soon. Cheers. Bye.